Thank you very much. Yeah, I was looking up at the mirrors, and there was always things I wanted to do with mirrors above me, but I didn't think the Hall of Fame would be one of them. <laughs> As I, as I thought about what this award meant to me, many games flashed through my career. Many are worth sharing, but I really decided to have that done each week with Bob Montgomery's Sports Remembered column and what Hank Lodge does on the uh, Internet Hall of Fame. So what I really want to talk about is basically why I think I'm up here tonight. And it starts with four things that I I want to talk about is the infrastructure of my life. Let me first start with my family, both my parents, brothers and sisters, their spouses, my nieces and nephews were very supportive of my sports career. At age 19, I met Gail, my wife of 33 years and counting, and she became my biggest fan, rarely missing a game. After that, our daughters, Aubrey and Corey, would go to a lot of our games. The second is Edgewood Little League, City of Bristol school system, Park Department, American Legion, generosity of many business professionals such as Don Casson and Greg Fredette that provided me an opportunity to do the things that I enjoy doing. The third would be a group of people that served as my coaches and took an interest in me, provided a positive environment of developing my skills by learning important life lessons. People like Fu Fournier, Luke Dunn, Jim Kildoff, Clem Roy, Jim Bates Sr., Vin Punzel, Dave Mills, Mel Buchanan, to mention a few. The fourth is my teammates, and I will discuss them in a few minutes. My first form of structured competition was when I joined the Edgewood Little League at age eight. My coach, Fu Fournier and Luke Dunn, got me interested in pitching. Once the physical and mental Connection was made of having a ball in my hand and trying to get somebody out at the plate. Pitching was still in my blood and remains to this day. Playing competitively would continue when I transferred to Stafford School in grade seven. I met two guys that would become lifelong friends and teammates at Stafford School, Bristol Eastern and Post High School teams. Tim Thompson and Billy McCabe. Billy and I formed the battery for the school that won the championship our eighth grade year. Tim was our clutch hitter and base dealer. The three of us went on to play several sports at Bristol Eastern School. Billy and I continue our battery mate relationship during our school year and during our summers with the American Legion, Bristol Collegians, and the Cassins. Tim today is one of my closest friends. After graduation from high school and during my college summers, I started playing with a team sponsored by the Bristol Park System in the Connecticut Collegian Summer League. An interesting twist of fate is that people that I competed with in grammar school and high school now became my teammates. This core group of guys I would spend the next 30 to 40 summers with. Duke Snyder, Mike Jevanazzo, Jim Ziogas, Dave Raponi, John Chapoulis, and later on, Spec Monocle, Mark and John Ziogas. We played on several championship teams together and competed in the Connecticut uh, Collegiate Summer League as, uh, as well as the Hartford Twilight League. Billy McCabe and John Chapulis shared most of the catching at that time. While coaching during my college summers, I then, and then when I taught at St. Anne's, brought me together with two people that became an important part of my life today. In 1972, I coached the Cubs in the Thomas Monahan League, and one of the players that helped us tie for the championship was John Corso. After graduating from Fairfield University, Roland Corbin and I taught together and responsible for the sports programs at St. Anne's. In addition, we ran many of the summer sports programs for the Park Department. Through the years, uh, through sports, these two people have become important parts of my family as well as uh, good friends to this day. My summers after graduation from college would remain heavily with baseball. The core group of guys with some newcomers every year would get together with the goal of winning another league championship. It was around 1973 or so that a young standout pitcher by the name of uh, Rob Nicoletti joined our program. We eventually would live next to each other and our entire families would share many memorable moments through the years. In the end, uh, excuse me, it was at the end of 1970 that I stopped playing. However, during the summer of 1988, 
Dave Raponi called me and said that a core group of guys were getting together to play a team from Meriden. Would Nick and I be interested in playing? The game was the prelude to our involvement in the Connecticut Men's Senior Baseball League. Our performance for the next 10 years was eight. Eight, yeah. okay. eight state championships, <laughs> one streak of 58 consecutive wins. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was the entire team, the 58, and several trips to Arizona to compete in the Senior League's World Series. The chance to play competitive baseball again at that time of my life was a special time in my sports career. You see, the guys that I played with and won several championships many summers prior still, didn't lose, still did not lose their passion for winning and playing. The team's skill and desires equated to more championships. As we all know, it never gets old to win. And this core group of guys continue with the same drive and focus that we played with many years back. Chapulis, Bob Lincoln, and Steve Roberts shared the catching chores through most of those years. And a special time for me was when uh, Bobby Nicoletti, uh, who was noted for his pitching, went behind the dish to catch me a few times. Once again, the infrastructure of the family was there. Gail Aubrey and Corey and her friend Jamie Silver, my mother, and my mother-in-law would go to most of my games. My mother, who was in her 70s, would drive to the games, sit in her car, and for whatever reason, every time I threw a strike, started beeping the horn. <laughs> and for all you that know me, it's a good thing she didn't do it when I threw a ball. <laughs> when I try, what I tried to communicate tonight is the skill and desire to uh, compete is only part of the equation. In my case, I was fortunate enough to have a strong infrastructure that allowed me to be successful in the sports arena. It's nice to sit back and reminisce about all the championships that I've been involved with over the years. However, what's really special is that the people that I share those moments with are still part of my life today. Memories will fade, but the relationships that were developed during those times are there for life. In summary, thanks to my family, friends, sponsors, my coaches, teammates that helped develop a strong tradition of winning and made my time playing more enjoyable. Thank you very much.